We now return to your regularly scheduled Shadow Dragon. So now we know what's been happening for the last two years while Marth's been gone. Dolor and its allies have more or less taken over the continent, and, well, things haven't really been too good. But on the other hand, we do also know that there's at least a small force fighting back, thanks to the fact that Camus helps Nina escape. No Grand Order of Knights until now, that is. Okay, we're like level 5 at best, but nonetheless, we're still pretty grand, I swear. Prince Marth, don't be a vengeful idiot. That won't get you anywhere. Protected by its kind people, and the ocean, and also Dollar's laziness, I guess. Oh no! Pirates blinked into existence! Also, a village blew up nearby. I don't know how you guys didn't notice that. And after two years, we ride yet again. But of course, before we get to this chapter proper, we should go over the new units we can get. So first off is the unit we technically got in the previous chapter. Drog here is a knight, and of course knights are generally units with high defense and low speed. I say generally because Drog's actually a pretty quick knight, but unfortunately his defense does take a little bit of a hit as a result. So if you do want a knight that's a bit out of the ordinary, Drog's your man. And to be completely fair, he still makes a pretty good wall early on, so... He's not bad for that, especially since we're not going to get another knight for at least a little while. Next off, we have Norn, who is an archer just like Gordon. I think she's better than he is overall. First off, she starts with a better bow rank, and she also has higher strength and much higher speed than he does. The only problem is that her luck and defense growths aren't quite as good, but honestly, I think the speed just makes her so much better than Gordon overall, and... Of course, the major downside to her is the fact that you do have to have two units dead by the end of the previous chapter in order to actually get her, which is a shame because that means she's not quite worth it, even if she is the better archer. And lastly, we have Seda. Now, as I said before, Pegasus Knights are generally my favorite class, or one of my favorite classes at least. She has a very good speed growth. It's one of the best in the game, and she'll easily max out her speed early on. Her luck growth isn't bad either, and unfortunately her strength growth isn't really the best. Neither are her HP or defense growths, so she's not got the best survivability, so if you don't really have good luck, Seda's not going to be too good. But for the most part, I think she generally turns out pretty well, especially without Wing Spear of hers. It might be a rare weapon, but it does allow her to have quite a bit of an edge over most units because of its high strength. So, now that we're done with that, we can actually get into the chapter. Most of these guys are axe-wielding units, meaning they'll be pretty easy since most of her units use swords. The only ones who don't are Drog and Seda, and since Drog has a high defense, he won't have much of a problem. But Seda can pick off this thief right at the start, since he will try to go for that village over there, but we'll take care of them easily enough with this wing spear. Also, holy shit! Seda's first turn of the game, and she immediately gets a critical. I'm gonna take that as a good sign, to be honest. Oh, whoops. Thank you for saving us, unlike those other poor saps who exploded. That would definitely please me. So, uh, here's one thing about Shadow Dragon. It doesn't really give you that many items. Generally, 
if you go to a village, they'll just give you a whole lot of money and just say, okay, spend this on whatever you want, which for me, of course, is usually iron weapons because while they may not be the most powerful, usually later on in the game, your units will be strong enough where their own strength is enough to take down enemies. It's more the durability I worry about, so usually I buy iron and steel weapons, and steel weapons are less common, I just use them in a pinch, and silver weapons I never really buy, because usually the ones I start with, like ones I'm given by the game, those usually last long enough for me to, you know, just finish the game without breaking them. And of course, as I said before, Pegasus Knights are weak to being shot by arrows. Which, of course, we already went to in depth in the Akania Saga Chapter 2, but... That's just a reminder there, since we now have Seda. We can't just have her fly all the way to the end of the area and have her stab the boss to death, because if she does try that, well, she's probably going to be shot by the archer. I think that's most of the reason that Pegasus Knights were given that weakness, because... If they weren't weak to arrows, then they could kind of just charge the entire chapter, because they can go over almost any tiles. Of course, in fairness at the moment, those pirates would probably kill her, since there are a whole lot of them. Uh, baiting them out is pretty much the best strategy here. Uh, we don't have to go that slowly, but we are going slow enough where they don't charge us too much at a time, and they're pretty easy to take down. We do have to worry a little bit about being hit because, of course, we don't have a healer at the moment. Seda herself, though, probably won't be able to charge and kill a whole lot of units on her own. At least not till later in the game. Later in the game, she probably could do that, other than just being hit by archers. Uh, I also want to mention that you probably should buy a bunch of iron weapons and then give her one of the iron spears, or iron lances rather, because you don't want to abuse that wing spear. Wing Spears are very rare, but they do give you a lot of strength, and since they're one of Seda's main weapons, you want to save them mainly for bosses and enemies you couldn't take out otherwise. For normal enemies, just stick to a normal lance, otherwise you're just going to be wasting a good weapon. So strategy-wise, there's nothing really too complex about this chapter. Uh, as I said before, it's pretty much just you lure enemies in and you take them out at your leisure. And the map itself is actually designed for that sort of thing. It's pretty linear, and there's not really much of a chance for the enemies to get the drop on you, uh, with the exception of those two pirates up there. Uh, pirates are able to cross over water tiles, which does give them an advantage. They can shortcut across certain areas, but honestly, it's not really too tough here, because it's two pirates. Even if they try to approach us from behind, what are they really going to do? I mean, especially against sword users. They have pretty much no chance against us. Drog is also perfect for this chapter because he makes a fantastic wall at this point. Uh, pretty much any given enemy will only do a single point of damage against him, and in fact, in my other file where I had to get him killed, unfortunately, uh, I actually sent him through the map alone, unequipped, and eventually I just had to send him to the boss because the enemies just weren't killing him at all, so the boss was the only thing I could use to actually get Drog killed, so he's pretty good here. Plus, his speed does mean that he's able to attack them and do a fair amount of damage, but he probably won't finish them off since there's pretty much no chance for him to double. So, weaker units are able to get a bit of experience, though. With the prologue, there's not as much of a reason to do that. I mean, Gordon's still going to be weak, uh, Seda will be fairly weak, but other than that, uh, not too much. Oh, and if you got Norn from the previous chapter, but unfortunately I didn't. No, no Norn for me, even though I do kind of like her better than Gordon. Uh, but either Archer, though, uh, even though I do like Norn better, they both kind of need a lot of experience in order to get good. Uh, unfortunately, the Archers in this game aren't the best, and that's because they, they're all pretty slow, and I don't know why. Because Archers really shouldn't be slow. I'd prefer speed over strength for, for them, really. Man, just mainly because I think doubling is one of the most, most important things an Archer can do, because they're not going to get much strength anyway. Yeah, see? I mean, this is a bit of a weird position to be in, and I do have to make sure to get Gordon uh, in a bit of a safer spot than I have him in, but really, they're not going to do too much. 
And just stay away from the fortress, of course, because you don't want them getting that advantage. Just put some sword users on the edge of their danger zone, and they're not going to survive. Could send him over now. Uh, I'd for not to, though. I think I'll also keep Seda there. And, yep, yeah, as I thought, they're going to attack her. Because, of course, they will usually prior prioritize units like that with uh, weapon disadvantages, or if they're just generally a bit weak. Of course, Seda here is still a pretty good unit, so even if she's technically the weaker unit, she's not going to have much of a problem against these guys. Of course, it sure does suck that we don't have a healer. If only we had one of those right now. Like, if only we could get them from that town over there. Oh yeah, I should probably have Jagan keep up with everything even though he's going to do absolutely nothing. He, he's definitely not a unit you should need unless you're playing on a harder difficulty. Because Jagan, like that one dude said, he's a bit of a waste of experience. That wasn't the exact wording, but eh, close enough. From this point onward, you don't need him. And really, in general, you shouldn't need him for anything. Sometimes in a Fire Emblem game, it's useful to have this crutch early on, but honestly, in Shadow Dragon, I don't find him that useful. Speed shouldn't be an issue here either, I mean, you can mostly take this chapter at your leisure unless you let that thief from the beginning live, and why would you do that? If that thief is able to destroy any other village other than this one or the one from way before, that's really on your head. Because that guy's right at the start, you should be able to kill him no problem. And thankfully, pirates can't destroy villages in this game, otherwise, well, we would have lost out on a character. And wouldn't that have been a shame? Oh, just spoil it, why don't ya? But yes, the character in that village is going to be a healer, which, you know, healer's a healer, so I'm definitely looking forward to that, especially since Kane's almost dead. Means I don't have to just send a character to a fortress and then basically have them sit there for the rest of the fight, because, yeah, by the time he'd be fully healed, it'd be far too late, and he wouldn't really be able to do anything. Then again, I don't really think Kane's going to be doing much anyway. I kind of want to focus a little more on Seda since she just joined us. Also want to send Jagan down there. Just going to have all the characters I don't need go to the houses. Oh no, not Gomer. I'd hate to be under the rule of a man named Gomer. That's just gotta be embarrassing. Oh no! That Gomer, what a harsh and cruel tyrant! I cannot believe he is in control of our fair town. Oh, the cruelty. Anyway, let's just send Marth to this village. We could have done this sooner, but no, it's always gotta be Marth. Good job selling yourself there, Ryze. Well then, while we heal up Kane right now, why don't we look at Ryze himself? Well, in fairness, there's not really too much to say about Ryze. I mean, he's a healer, he heals, he cannot fight at all, therefore keep him in the back because enemies will target him and, well, yeah, he won't survive too many attacks. As a healer, he's not the best in the game, but at the moment he's all you got, so he's going to be useful for a few chapters. Now, at this point, we're pretty much just going to set up and get everyone in position for the boss. Uh, I could just attack him right now, but he does heal. Uh, that is actually a trick you can use. Uh, because most bosses heal, you can actually use that to grind. Uh, I'm not going to because that would be really, really slow, and uh, yeah, it would be a waste of time overall, and it's not like I really need the experience anyway, so I'm just going to straight up kill him once I get the chance which I think we're all in a good position to do so at this point. Oh yeah? Well, mighty your face off! Oh, apparently Gordon did not appreciate that and just decided to critical attack him. Now, if only he could have done some actual damage. That would have been nice. Uh, anyway, Gazak here really isn't anything special. Uh, he does have a Steel Axe, so therefore he's fairly strong, but other than that little bit of bite, there's not much to him. Uh, 
He doesn't have much speed or defense, so he's fairly easy to take down. Plus, he doesn't move, which always helps. Uh, nor does he have a uh, hand axe. Sometimes bosses will have hand axes, which makes it harder for your uh, distance attackers to get attacks in, but this time, nope. And let's just finish him off. This'll hurt, but eh, who cares. No, I won't, because they're dead. Man, it's not like you were... It's not like you're really all that effective, so I really don't see how I'm going to be paying. And that was a pretty good level. Would have preferred strength, but I'm definitely not paying in terms of bad levels, so... Really, unless you're really good at haunting me, I'm not foreseeing any difficulty there. And, eh, why the hell not, we'll get one more turn of healing in. Just give Ryze a little bit of extra experience. I'm not really going to be keeping him for the entire game or anything, because there is a better healer coming up in a few chapters, but for the time being, I'll help him along. To be fair, it's more of a waste of a heal staff, so I'm kind of dumb, but eh, whatever. Uh, Talus King, Martha's over there? You're looking straight at me. It's kind of creepy, actually. The time has come, the time is now. Marth K. Mooney, could you please fuck off already? You've been here for two years, you haven't been paying rent, and I know your country was taken over, but seriously, man, you gotta stop. You, you gotta go out there in the world and take it back rather than just lounging around here. Also, sometimes a few other characters, but mostly you. Okay, bye.